The family that prays together stays together. This was a famous line by Father Patrick Payton, a Holy Cross priest who's now venerable, who promoted the family rosary in the decades after World War II through his family rosary crusade. And some of you here may be old enough to remember those crusades. There's even a movie out about him called Pray, the story of Patrick Payton that you can find on most movie platforms. My dad remembers as a boy, this is in the 1950s, uh, traveling from San Diego to the LA Coliseum to participate in one of Father Payton's rallies. You can imagine the LA Coliseum, nearly 80,000 people there to hear Father Payton's message and to pray the rosary together. He was also famous for another line. A world at prayer is a world at peace. Why is there so little peace in the world and in our families and in our personal lives? Usually because there's too little prayer. And, that, and because of that, we can stay agitated and anxious and frustrated and sad. It is not easy for a family to pray together. Households are busy, often both dad and mom work, kids are involved in all sorts of activities, and which these things are not bad in and of themselves, but they often take a more important priority than the most important priority, which of course is the relationship with God. Because of them, then families don't get to spend much time together with the Lord, and then our families suffer from a lack of peace. But even when we know we should be praying as a family, we can often feel overwhelmed or confused about, about what exactly to do. Now, if, wherever we're at, let's take a look at the nativity scene. You know, the nativity scenes are very powerful. It's no wonder that St. Francis of Assisi's idea became so wildly popular that we can't think of Christmas without a crash scene. And with this great devotion to the church, we're invited to give it a contemplative gaze. Look at the nativities and notice something. We see St. Joseph, the Blessed Mother, Jesus. Here are not three individuals, but a family. God the Son has become one with us, and in doing so has, has entered not only into human life, but at its very center, which is the family. Jesus came not only to heal our fallen nature, but he also came to heal and sanctify the life of the family. And why would the good Lord go and do something like that? Because he made the family the foundation of human life. The Lord created the family. He created the family to make us holy. He wants to make every family a holy family. Now, I want to draw attention to one aspect of that scene, of the, of the crash scene. Notice how everybody is focused on one figure, this baby Jesus. Our Lady and St. Joseph are turned toward him. And I would imagine that the family life, the home life, which for them, which wasn't always easy, was filled with prayer. Imagine every interaction in family life was an encounter with God the Son. And St. Luke relates in his gospel that Mary treasured all these things in her heart. She pondered, she contemplated the great mystery of God's love and salvation that was unfolding in her family. And that, that, uh, that line, Mary treasured all these things in her heart, she pondered them, she prayed them, this gave rise to a tremendous prayer in the church. With Our Lady, we're invited to contemplate and pray the mysteries of salvation and grow in our personal and familial relationship with Jesus. And that prayer is the rosary. You know, in her various apparitions the past few centuries, Our Lady has repeatedly asked Christians to pray the rosary, especially for peace in the world. There are many reasons why this, this prayer is so I ideally suited for family prayer. And even busy families can find it to be a practical way that family prayer can actually happen. Because we, you know, we can think about, oh yeah, we need to do this. And, but the question is like, well, what and how? And it can, it can, it can, we can get lost in that. 
But the rosary is a very concrete, practical prayer that is ideally suited for families. First, the prayer is deeply scriptural. Not only in the, in the repetitive prayers that are said, uh, which come from, come from the Bible, but the, but the mysteries themselves that we're invited to ponder and to contemplate. The fact that, that the, the rosary taken all together was to be based on the 150 Psalms from the Bible. So it's a deeply scriptural prayer. More, more, uh, moreover, and maybe more importantly for families, it has a start and a finish. That's very helpful. And, and, that, and that a five-decade rosary takes about 15 minutes to pray out loud. So the, and the prayer is also repetitive, which even allows young children to take part. Each person in the family can take turn leading a decade of the rosary. And then we're also invited to use our imagination when reciting the prayers. The prayers kind of function as almost kind of a mantra, if you will, but our minds are it's to free up our minds to be able to, to imagine and to contemplate the mystery that we're praying. And children love to use their imagination. They can be invited to picture the scene, what do they see, smell, feel, etc. What are the people doing? To place yourself in the mystery and interact with whomever is there. You know, I grew up in a family that, that we did pray the rosary as a family often. It would, didn't happen every day, but it happened a lot. And, uh, and it, was, it was our family prayer. And we started so young that I, I can't actually remember a time where I didn't know how to pray the rosary. So it must have been like, it must have been like three or four years old. And which I think is kind of a beautiful thing in my life to be able to think about, well, I can't, I can't uh, remember a time where I didn't know how to pray that. And the crucial thing to, for us to help make family prayer happen was when we prayed it. We prayed it before bedtime. It was a time when the, when the, when the day was winding down, getting ready to go to sleep. Often when we were little, we had, our, we had the bath done, the PJs were on. And we usually prayed in one of the bedrooms, and, and it wasn't too formal, right? The younger ones were held by dad and mom while we prayed. Um, sometimes we're laying on the, on the floor with a pillow. Um, and, and so in my young mind, this associated prayer with closeness and intimacy, that prayer was a loving embrace. And even my younger siblings who couldn't say the prayers yet, at least they could handle the rosary and they'd sit there and they'd just kind of, you know, look at it and, and, uh, and, and carry it around. Another great time to pray the family rosary was in the car. And I know even a number of school families who pray on the way to school, drop off, or on the way home after pickup. And this foundation of the family rosary, this habit of praying the rosary, really helped me immensely when I became an ad adult, especially when I went, went away to college at Notre Dame. That's where Father Peyton uh, studied for the priesthood. I wouldn't have had the habit unless my dad and mom had instilled it in me growing up. And I was away from home, and I, in those years of college, I, didn't, I only went home during Christmas and summer. And so, I, especially at the beginning, I was anxious being away from home and engaged in a tough academic program. I wasn't making the grades I was used to. I was trying to figure things out, not only with my classes, but also with the direction of my life. And then I was, so I was drawn to the beautiful dorm chapel in the, in the dorm that I lived in, Alumni Hall. And I began to pray, pick up and pray my daily rosary there in the evening, especially when I was worried about stuff. And you know what it did? It brought me peace. It helped me not to worry too much. It was so tangible, even the beads moving through the fingers. And as I kept up that daily rosary, I became more and more aware of my vocation, that Jesus was calling me to the priesthood. And so whenever in, life, in my life, whenever I had a problem or a difficulty, praying the rosary brought great graces that either resolved the problem or strengthened me to be able to, to get through. So it's a very, very, um, it's, even today, it's, it's a habit of, of my life. And I, again, I can't imagine my spiritual life w without it. Um, I was uh, doing some research, and I came across a, a Catholic mom 
Uh, her name's Rosemary Bogdan. She, she shared her family's move to pray the rosary together. And, and she, she writes, she said, we tried to make it very doable. If people were tired, they could get a blanket and pillow and lie on the floor. If they fell asleep, that was okay. Sometimes before we started, we'd make tea or hot chocolate for those who wanted it. Very young children did not have to be still. In fact, we let them do whatever they wanted as they stayed, as they stayed in the room and did not talk. They could play quietly with toys and play as they were able and interested, pray as they were able and interested. Sometimes I wondered if we should require a little more reverence, a little more self-discipline, but then I reminded myself that these were children and we needed to make the experience not only possible but enjoyable. And here's what she says, within a short period of time, there was a very recognizable increase of peace in our family. Tensions and problems mysteriously disappeared. Both my husband and I noticed this. It was undeniable. I asked him if he were doing anything different. He had not, and I hadn't either. The prayer of the family rosary was the only explanation. The family that play, prays together stays together. The prayer that Father Peyton promoted was the rosary. It was very well suited for family prayer. So imagine what Jesus would do in our hearts, in our families, in our parish if we do this. And even if praying the rosary every day seems like too much, just get a rosary and start carrying it around with you. Just put it in your pocket. That's what I do. I got my rosary here. This is my, this is my favorite one. It's called a combat rosary. Uh, maybe a spe special gift for a guy, but, but uh, it is a replica of, of the rosaries that were given to soldiers in World War I. It has a St. Benedict medal attached to it, but I thought, this is, I just carry it around with me. And even if I don't get to it every day, get to it most days, but even if I don't get to it every day, just having it in my pocket helps. So let's, let's, uh, let's move on that. Like make it a daily item in your pockets, just as your wallet and your keys, and just try to start. Our Lady will help us, and through this we'll help to make our families holy families.